Hey, good morning, everybody. It is Pastor Randy here with, uh, whoops. Guys are having a great morning. I know I am. Uh, you know, every morning I get up, you know, I get up real early and then I just spend time with the Lord or, you know, watch a, a YouTube video that has to do something about uh, Jesus, right? So, you know, so, you know, guys, whoops, uh, the same work. And there we go. So, you know, whether you guys are tuning, you know, I want to welcome you to another awesome Bible study here at Made Free Church. You know, whether you guys are tuning in on YouTube or catching us on Facebook or even joining us on our Made Free Church and Tactical Bible Guy podcasting platforms, I'm thrilled to have you with us as we dig into to God's word together. So we're going to take a little bit of a break, you know, with the first and second Samuel. And I want to do a series on Titus. And, and I think that it is, it, it's just like four chapters, three or four chapters, right? But, but I think it's, it's something that we need to do. So I wanted to kind of take a pause and go through the book of Titus, you know, um, you know, I've been seeing on, 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 uh, uh TikTok and, 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 you know, e, you know, it, e, even on, you know, X, you know, which was formerly Twitter, you know, all these, all these different platforms, uh, of of w women who are apostles and who are pastors and and stuff like that and that goes against scripture i'm not saying that women cannot you know be in leadership i'm just saying women cannot hold the office of apostle uh, uh or pastor you know i see a lot of you know fake you know uh um you know fake prophetess and prophets on there man and you know it's funny because they're all from from Africa, you know what I mean? And, and it's just weird. It's just weird, you know, and, uh, but they're fake guys, you know, and, and, and we have to address it. So, you know, Titus is one of those, um, what are those, uh, 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 books in the Bible that talks about, you know, the first chapter is talking about leadership, you know, and, uh, I'm going to say this unapologetically and publicly, you know, um, and I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, you can call me whatever you want to call me. Women are, cannot hold, and this is scripture. If you look at Titus one, if you look at in first Corinthians, if you look in, you know, uh, first Timothy three, women are not allowed to hold the office of pastor or apostle. You got fake, fake, fake people out there like Kristen Crick, Joyce Myers, you know, uh, Paula White, you know, all these people, Beth Moore, that are saying that they're apostles and pastors and and, and they're really not, you know, they're, they're, they're really, really not. So, no, I'm not against women. I'm not against women in leadership. But when it comes to apostles, which there is no uh, apostles today, uh, no modern day apostles, right, because they're not they didn't walk with Jesus physically. They didn't speak to Jesus. They weren't taught by Jesus. And they didn't live 200, 2,500 years ago, right? So uh, that office has been closed since the apostle John passed away in the book of Revelation, right? So I'm just letting it be out there. And the reason why I'm doing this is because if we're going to look at scripture and scripture alone, right? Um, and then we've got to understand that women have a role in men so do men so anyway let's pray <laughs> heavenly father we just come before you and 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 you know connected by technology but bound by a shared love for you you know we come before you before your throne with with hearts of gratitude lord and thankfulness thank you for the privilege of diving into your word seeking wisdom and growing together as a community lord we acknowledge your presence here united us across distances and platforms we invite your holy spirit to move among us guiding our thoughts illuminating your the, the words of scripture and deepening our understanding lord may this be a time of study you know, let it be more than just an intellectual exercise, but an encounter with your living word. We lift up those that are joining us on, on YouTube, Facebook, 
and and uh, our, our our podcasting platforms lord bless each every viewer and listener with your peace and revelation may your word resonate in the depths of their hearts and bring clarity and inspiration lord as we explore your t- uh, teachings here in titus lord help us Help us apply these timeless truths in our lives. Empower us to be leaders in our sphere of influence, reflecting a servant heart leadership modeled by Jesus. You know, strengthen our unity, you know, as as a body of Christ. And may your love radiate through our interactions. Lord, we put on the full armor of God, which it says in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, Lord. We just ask God that. You rebuild the hedges of protection, the shields around us, Heavenly Father. And we want to thank you for all that you do, Lord, all that you do, Lord. And, and uh, send your legion of angels down to fight for us and fight with us as we pick up those weapons of warfare. Lord, get this lowly preacher out of the way and let your word go forward. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. All right, guys. So today, you know, uh, we're diving into the book of Titus, right? It's 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 a little gem that's tucked away in the new testament so grab your bibles your favorite cup of coffee and let's get ready to unpack some wisdom here so let's set the stage for this letter now picture this the early christian community is vibrant right growing and spreading across different regions right in the midst of this exciting movement the apostle paul pens a letter to titus you know a trusted companion and a fellow laborer in the faith right so Paul's just not sending out a friendly hello. No, he gets some serious, he, he's got some serious insights and instructions to share to Titus. You know, you could almost feel the urgency in his words as, as he imparts his wisdom to Titus, who, who's tasked with overseeing and shepherding the believers in Crete. Now, now, why is leadership crucial in the church? Well, think of it, think of it about this. In any organization, be it a sports team, a business, and and yes, even a church, right? Leadership sets the tone, right? It, it's the rudder guiding the ship, ensuring that it stays on course. Without leadership, solid leadership, things can get chaotic and the mission can get a little lost in the shuffle, right? You know, in, 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 a, in the church context, leadership isn't about having a title or a position. It's about embodying the heart of a servant, leading by example and steering the community towards a deeper faith and unity, right? Paul understood this. And and that's why his words to Titus carried weight and significance. So picture this, right? Picture picture Titus reading this letter to the believers in Crete, right? His, His voice echoing through small gatherings. Now, Paul's words weren't just meant for Titus, but it was meant for the entire community, right? For all those hungry for spiritual guidance and eager to live out their faith with authentic, uh, uh, authentically. Now, so as we embark on this journey, guys, through Titus, let's keep in mind the broader context, right? It's not just about ancient history. It's about the timeless principles that resonate with us today. Right. We, 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 we may not be in Crete. Right. And, and but but we're a part of a community, a family seeking to navigate the challenges of life together. Right. And, and that's the way I think of you guys, man. I really, really do, man. And, and 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 that's where leadership comes in. Right. It's not just from the pulpit. It's in our homes, workplaces and 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 the broader context in our communities. You know, and 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 we're all leaders in some way, influencing those around us, right? So, so let's lean in and listen up and discover the gems, the wisdom uh, that Titus can hold for us. So, you know, guys, get get ready for some truth bombs, some engagement, and maybe even a challenge or two. Together, let's explore how leadership, rooted in the principles outlined in Titus, can shape our lives and the life of this incredible made free church family. Amen. Amen. So let's read today's word together. We're in Titus chapter one. We're going to be uh, uh, reading 16 verses today. And um, then tomorrow we're going to go to chapter two and you're just going to love it. Right. So let's let's start at uh, Titus chapter one, verse one. Paul, 
And I'm reading out of the LS, the LS, the LSB guys, the Legacy Standard Bible. If you guys don't know that, go check it out. You can get the app, or you can actually go to uh, 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 316 Publishing and, and actually get, you know, the, the the books there. So it says this: Paul, a slave of God and apostle of Jesus Christ, for the faith of God's elect and full knowledge of the truth, which is according to godliness in hope of eternal life which god who cannot lie promised for all eternity but at the proper time manifested his works in preaching with which i entrusted according to the commandment of god our savior to titus my genuine child according to our common faith grace and peace from god the father and jesus christ our savior for this reason I left you in Crete that you would set in order what remains and appoint elders in every city as I directed you. Namely, if any man is a, a beyond reproach, a husband of one wife, having faithful children who are not accused of dispensation or rebellious, right? Uh, uh, for the overseer must be beyond reproach, God's stewards, and so, uh, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not addicted to wine, not pu uh, uh, pugnacious, not founded for dishonest gain, but hospitable, loving, what is good, sensible, righteous, holy, and self-controlled, holding fast uh, the faithful word, which in accordance with teaching, with the teaching, so that he will be both exhort uh exhort in sound doctrine and approve those who contradict for there are many rebellious men empty talkers deceivers especially those of the circumcision who must be silenced because they are setting whole families teaching and things they should not teach for the sake of dishonest gain one of uh one of them themselves a prophet of their own right uh, said Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, and lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. For the reason, reprove them severely, so they may be in, they may be sound in faith, not paying attention to the Jewish myths or the commandments of men who turn away from the truth. To the pure, to the pure, all things are pure. But those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but both their mind and their conscience has been defiled. They profess to know God, but their works deny him being detestable and dishonest and unfit for any good work. All right. That's thick right there, guys. You know, that's thick. Now let's jump into the nitty gritty verses one through four. And in Ravel, you know what Paul has to say about the authority as an apostle. So, uh, let's dive in here. First off, Paul isn't dropping an A word uh, uh, casually, right? He, he's no, he, he's throwing it out there with a purpose. You, you see, he kicks off his letter by introducing himself as a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. What's the translation? He's not some guy with with, with good advice. He's got a direct line to the big boss, God himself, right? Now, Paul wants Titus and the crew in Crete, you know, to, to know that, you know, he's not some self, he's not on a self-appointed mission, right? You know, his, his authority comes straight from God, period. You know, it's like having a, a, a having the CEO of the universe sign off on your job title. That's pretty legit, right? So why does this matter? Well, there's a there, 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 there's a there's a purpose for it, right? Paul isn't just throwing his weight around. He's got a mission, a purpose that's bigger than him, right? His gig as an apostle isn't about collecting a fancy titles or racking up some spiritual points, right? No, no, he's he, he's he's about a calling, right? A, a mission to bring about the uh, the faith of God's elect and the acknowledge the truth that leads to godliness. Amen. So let's break this down, guys, right? Paul's not in it for fame and glory, right? He, he's in it for you and me, right? It, it's about faith. It's about have. it's not just about any faith. It's about the faith that's grounded in deep personal relationship with God and, 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 and the knowledge of 
truth, right? And that's not just an, it, it, it's not just a, an intellectual head knowledge, right? It, it's the kind of truth that transforms lives, leading a lifestyle of godliness, right? Now picture this. Paul is seasoned apostle. We have fired up about sharing the life-changing truth about Jesus. And, you know, he's not holding anything back, right? You know, and he's definitely not on a power trip. Right. He's on a mission to ignite faith and drop some truth bombs that will revolutionize how the Cretan crew lives their lives. Right. So guess what? Right. That that, that this this mission isn't a, a one time thing. Right. It's 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 an ongoing journey, guys. He, you know, Paul's in it for the long haul. Right. Like he wants Titus and the crew in, in Crete to catch the same passion, a passion for growing in faith and living in the truth that transforms. So as we unpack these verses, man, you know, let's, let's soak in the fact that, that Paul's not just a distant figure from biblical times, right? His words carry rate and uh, weight and relevance for us today. You know, we're, we're a part of the, of this grand mission, a mission of faith, truth, and godliness guys. So, so let's embrace it. Let's live it and, and let the authority of Paul's apostleship inspire us to dive deeper into our own journey of faith and truth. Okay. So let's roll up our sleeves and chat about some, some pretty crucial, uh, 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 some pre co pretty crucial stuff in the church appointing elders. Okay. So we're digging into verses five through nine, right? And Paul lays down, uh, lays down the lockdown on what it takes to be an elder. And spoiler alert, it's not just about having a cool title, right? So let's tackle the, the, the qualifications first, right? So Paul's like, all right, if you're going to be an elder, here's a checklist, right? Uh, it's not the, the flashiest resume or, or having a lot of social media followers. It's about character, right? You, you've got to be solid, individual, blameless, faithful, marriage, and faithful in a marriage, right? Uh, at marriage, a wife, a husband be, having uh, one wife, not a wife having a husband, right? Not hot tempered, not a hothead, right? And and definitely not a party animal, right? No, elders are, co are cool, calm, and collected folks who got their lives together, right? This is basically what he's saying. But 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 here's, and it's not about it's not about just being a poster child for protection. You know, no one is perfect, right? You know what I mean? And Paul gets that. I mean, I'm not perfect. I've made my mistakes. You know, there's other pastors that made their mistakes. We're all not perfect. And we're we're, we're all not like Jesus. You know what I mean? And, and we all have our issues. And, and that's just the truth. So, and, and I think that's why he throws down in, in, in a not overbearing and not pursuing dishonest gain bits, right? You know, elders aren't power hungry tyrants, right? You know, that they're definitely not in it for the money, right? It's about genuine down-to-earth authenticity. You know, you see a lot of pastors out there, you know, Joel Steen, your best life now, you know, this, that, and that, you know, just said, you know, uh, as, as, as send a thousand dollar seed and, and God will bless you. No, man, you know, it's like, it's ministries like ours that don't do that, that never get funded. And why is that? Because we don't get funded because the simple fact of it being is, is that we're not tickling ears. We're being biblical, right? You know, so, so, you know, uh, um, now, 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 why is it about genuine down to earth on Why does that matter? Right? Well, let's talk about the elephant in the room, leadership and order. Now, now picture this church without leader is, is like a, a soccer game without referees chaos, confusion, and probably some bruised egos, right? Elders are the, are the referees of the church game, maintaining order, assuring everyone plays fair and keeping the mission on track. You know, Paul, Paul knows that, that for the church to thrive, it needs solid leaders who can guide, guard, and govern, right? You know, elders, uh, aren't just figureheads, right? They're the ones steering the ship, making sure it doesn't hit any icebergs and, and, and Hey, you know, we, we all know life gets messy sometimes, right? You know, that, that, that's where the elders come in, right? 
not not with jump ju uh, judgmental eyes but with hearts full of grace ready to navigate the meth mess of, alongside their congregations right now let's talk about shepherding right yeah, you know it, not, not the fluffy not 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 the kind with the fluffy sheep right but the spiritual kind right elders aren't just sitting in their ivory towers right they're down in the trenches walking alongside their flock Right. And, 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 you know, they're, they're the wise, caring shepherds who know their sheep by name, listen to their concerns and, and, and who lead with a heart of service. Right. If you are in a mega church and you don't personally know your pastor, that's an issue. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm talking about the senior pastor. Right? You know, if you've never been able to talk to him, you've never been able, you know what I mean? Come on, man. So, That's why I don't like mega churches, you know, because you you can't shepherd, you can't be, you can't shepherd your flock when you have 10, 15,000 people showing up to your church. You know, I mean, what I mean by that is you don't know everybody's name, right? So as we read here in Titus, you know, let, let, let's not see the job, just let, let's not just see the job description for elders. It's a call, a lifestyle, a lifestyle of integrity, humility, and service. It's a call for leaders who not only meet the checklist, but who embody the heart of Christ, the ultimate shepherd. Now, you guys are ready to explore more? Okay, good. Because we're going to be diving in to this part of Titus, um, you know, to how to deal with fesky, pesky, pesky false teachers, right? We're going to be in verses 10 through 16 where Paul dishes out real talk about spotting and handling the imposters in, in, in our in, in our spiritual myths. First of all, let's talk about characteristics, right? Paul's like a detective here. Like he's given us the lowdown on how to spot false teachers a mile away. They, these aren't the run of the mill misunderstandings or theological debates, right? We're talking about folks causing real spiritual mischief. Right. You know, well, watch for those who are, are rebellious, empty talkers and deceivers. Right. Now, you know, picture a smooth talker who's all about the right words, but zilch when it comes to the substance. That's a false teacher. Alert. Oh, excuse me. That's a false teacher alert right there. Right now. Paul is not just gossiping about these folks. He's laying down. He's laying out the, the he's laying out. He's laying it out for a reason. Right. Right. The danger of deviating from sound doctrine. Right. Now, think about sound doctrine as guard guardrails to, on the spiritual highway. Right. You stray too far. You might find yourself creating off into theological chaos. Right. False teachers aren't just harmless, aren't just about harmless quirks. They are like a road signs leading you off a cliff. Now, I got caught up in this when I went out to Wildemar with a so-called pastor um, and got all caught up in the hyper-Calvinism issue, right? You know what I mean? And uh, uh, let me tell you, man, it wasn't cool. And, you know, and and I was I was a brand new, brand new Christian, brand new pastor, right? And I went out to try to help him, you know, on his, and his, on his so-called uh, a discipleship ranch, which was just a, a, a ranch full of druggies and who still continue to do drugs, meth, heroin and stuff like that. It was just way out, you know, and, uh, um, you know, and I got caught up into the hyper Calvinism. That's that's why I don't like Calvinism anymore is, is because of this dude, you know, and, and other people that I've met, you know, that are that are supposed Calvinists. Right. You know, and, uh, um, you know, but I still, you know. There's a lot of that doctrine I still hold to because it's biblical, you know what I mean? But, but, you know, this guy's a false teacher, big time false teacher, right? You know, and uh, um, so, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, I, I got, I got into spiritual, it, it was hard for me to get out of, man. It really was. And, 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 but, you know, God, God is faithful and got me out of it. Right. So, you know, it's not about winning an argument or, you know, flexing theological muscles. It's about safeguarding the core truths and anchored in faith, right? Deviating from sound doctrines isn't just a detour. It's a potential shipwreck waiting to happen, right? 
Paul's not being dramatic. He's giving us a reality check. So, so, you know, to stick to the truth because the stakes are high right now, here's the cool part, right? Paul isn't about, you know, isn't throwing us into this theological battlefield on arm. No, you know, he, he's about arming us with, with, with discernment and re, and, and re, uh, refutation, uh, refu, refutation skills. Discernment is like a superpower that, that helps us separate the wheat from the chaff. Right. And, and it's, it's the ability to sniff out genuine from the counterfeit. Right. So Paul doesn't stop at discernment. He, he's all about action, right. Uh, to refute it. Right. And this is not just about going, Hmm, that sounds kind of fishy. No, it's about stepping up, speaking up, setting the record straight. Right. You know, refuting is like, the superhero cape of the of the discerning Christian, right? Ready to fly when false teachings try to take over. And so picture this, you're in a small group, right? And someone starts spouting off ideas that doesn't quite line up with what you know is true, right? What do you do, right? You, you're, 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 you channel your inner Paul, discern the error, right? And, and gently but confidently say, now let's dig into to the Bible and see what the Bible says about that. But here's the thing. Refuting false teaching isn't about being a theological bulldozer. You know what I mean? Uh, it's about doing it with love, humility, and genuine desire for truth, right? Paul's not advocating for, for theological smackdowns, right? He's encouraging a community that looks out for one another, steering clear of the dangerous currents of false teaching. And there's a lot of that in our church today, right? And, and so as we navigate verses 10 through 16, remember, it's, it, it, it just isn't about a, a, a lesson on theological defense, right? It's a call to be vigilant, to hold fast to sound doctrine, and to be the, the kind of community that stands together against the tide of falsehood, right? So, you know, when you grab your Bible, you arm yourself with discernment, right? And so let's keep exploring this, the, the adventure that, that, that is Titus, right? It, it's, it's not just a journey of, uh, uh, through words. It's a journey through truth, discernment, and the love that binds us together, Right? So let's wrap up uh, our, our time here in Titus, right? With with a heart to heart, right? So we've journeyed through the whole chapter one of Titus, and trust me, you know it, it's been one of those wild rides because I got, I, you know, I dropped some some true stuff that you guys may or may not agree with, right? You know, um, so let's kind of recap what what we've learned. So first off, you know, we dipped our toes into to the authority of, of, of Paul as an apostle, right? Now, now this wasn't about flexing his spiritual muscles, but it's about a legit calling from, 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 from the top boss, God himself, right? Now, now, Paul wasn't just sending a letter. He was on a mission to ignite faith and drop some bomb, truth bombs that would revolutionize their lives, right? Now, think about, think of it as, as Paul passing us the torch saying, you've got to be, you're, you're a part of something big, right? Like you're a part of something big. And then we crashed into who's an elder 101, right? Now, you know, and, and I said it from the beginning, you know, and I said it from the beginning. And you guys, I may lose followers or I may lose people, but women are not to hold the office of pastor, period. And that's, and, and, and I stand on that. Right. It doesn't say a husband of one wife. It says husband of one wife, not wife of one husband. Right. So, you know, and elders aren't like spiritual celebrities. Right. They're humble, authentic leaders guiding the ship. And why does that matter? Because leadership is isn't just about uh, uh, a, a nice to have. Right. It's the glue holding the church together, maintaining order and, and keeping it on course. So. You know, and but see, we we didn't stop there. You know, we tackled, you know, the 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 not so fun topic of false teachers, right? Now I didn't name any, but you know, TD Jakes. You know, I did it first, right? TD Jakes, Joe Olstein, 
Todd White, Todd Bentley, you know, Paula White, Kristen Crick, you know, all these people are false teachers, man. Beth Moore, you know, uh, uh, you know, so, so, you know, it's, it's Paul, you know, he's being our spiritual detective, gave us the inside scoop on how to spirit, how to, how to, how to spot those spiritual imposters, right? It's not about theological debates. It's about safeguarding the core truths that are anchored in our faith, right? Deviating from South Doctrine isn't a cute detour. You know, I shared my thing, you know, when, when I deviated off, you know, sound doctrine, it's a potential shipwreck and I got shipwrecked, right? I did, but, but God brought me back into right relationship. It's, it's, you know, and, 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 and what's our superhero response discernment being, you know, refuting and the dynamic duel of keeping the community grounded in faith. And that's what we do here at made free church. And, and we, we stay grounded in truth in the word of God right now we're here at the conclusion you know and 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 uh, uh let's just soak that in for a minute so so what's what's the, what's the big takeaway you know faithful leadership is the heartbeat of a thriving church right it's not about having a leader on a pedestal but leaders that walk beside us right? Shepherding, guiding, and serving. Leadership isn't a title. It's a lifestyle, a call to embody the heart of Jesus in everything that we do. So here's the challenge, guys, right? Let's take these truths, whether whether you're leading a ministry, a small group, or you're a senior pastor at a church listening to this, right? Or just leading in your everyday life. Let's be the kind of leaders who reflect Jesus. It's not about perfection. It's about authenticity, humility, and a love that spills over onto everyone around us. You know, as we navigate the waters of leadership, let's let's be vis- let's be vigilant, right? The world might throw us curveballs and false teachings might try to sneak in, but armed with discernment and filled by love, we stand firm. Right. This this isn't just a journey through Titus. It's a journey through truth, a, you know, a, a community and the incredible love that God has for each and every one of us. So, guys, let's let's go out there and be the leaders that this world needs. Right. Leaders who point others to the one who is the way, the truth and the life. Right. The, the adventure continues. And, you know, and we're going to move through these chapters in Titus pretty quick so we can get back to uh, second Samuel. But I wanted to do Titus because Titus has some really huge nuggets in it. Right. So, you know, I can't wait to see, you know, how God moves in and, 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 and through each of us, you know, it's so, I want you guys to stay fired up, stay grounded and stay faithful. Right. So guys, I got a few announcements before we sign off. If you guys haven't checked out our website, go and check out our website, madefreechurch.org. You'll see who we are, right? And and you'll you'll find an awesome place where you can call home online for right now, right? And you'll find out uh, all of our ministries. We've got, you know, Believers in Christ ministry, our fellowship, right? Which we go out and actually, you know, um, you know, go out and and serve the homeless community you know, bring church to, we actually go into the, 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 the fire. We, we, we go into the, the, the den that we go into their encampments, set up, start barbecuing and feeding and, and stuff like that, man. And it's just a joy. It's just a real huge joy. Also, um, you know, we have, uh, um, you know, our new chaplains ministry, final charge chaplains, you know, um, you know, you know, women, you know, can't be overseers, can't be pastors, can't be chaplains, but they can be in this ministry. You know, we we can build them up into to leadership. You know, what I mean, uh, but they can't hold the 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 role of a chaplain. So that being said, you know, we got our new chaplains ministry. If you guys want to be a part of that? Hit me up. Let me know. You know, uh, we'll get you trained up to be a chaplain. And we're a hospital and convalescent uh, uh, ministry where we don't go into jails. But if you guys want to do that, you guys are more than welcome to. Um, and let's see, we have our Mary's Ranch, right? We're, we're looking to 
build a ranch for discipleship ranch for, for men and women. I mean, not men and women, but men and children. Sorry. You know, there, there, there's a lot of stuff out there for men, but there's not enough of that stuff out there for women. So we want to develop that. So, um, and, uh, um, you know, we have our, our crucified clothing line, you know, uh, which is our Christian clothing line. And um, basically what that is, that funds that we, we were using that to fund everything that we do. Right. You know, so um, you guys can go on to my tactical Bible guy uh, uh, TikTok, and you can find us out there on my, where we have a, a TikTok shop on there. You can check out all of our new stuff. We just dropped our Christ made t-shirt. So go out and get that. That's going to be really, really cool. So go out and get that guys. So, also, guys, I've written some books uh, that you can that I've self published on uh, Amazon Books and Barnes and Noble. You know, they're like Reformation Revived. It talks about the Reformation, the Apostle John walking in the footsteps of Christ, walking in his ways. You know, Warrior's Heart, which is a sixty day devotional, and I and and for all those warriors in recovery, like I I go to AA because I'm in recovery for alcoholism. I wrote two powerful books it's called recovering redemption and overcoming relapse right these are designed for those christians who are having issues with the whole god of my own understanding right because no one understands god but if they that that's a phrase that they make up so they can create their own god to suit their own agendas and then i have a new book coming out it's called the acts of the apostles it's going to be making their debut soon so get ready to dive into the the early church and the apostolic adventures that shaped the foundations of our faith. Now, guys, if you if you guys like these teachings and you guys have been inspired, you know, hit that like, share, and subscribe button on our YouTube channels and our and our podcast. We're on all the podcasting platforms: Apple, Spotify, Amazon, Google's going to be taken down, I think. So, but we're still on that. You know, we're on all of it. You know, you know, if you have CastBox or you have Apple, just go check us out. Tactical Bible Guy and uh, uh, Made Free Church. OK, so and just kind of imagine, you know, the ripple effect that that gets. One click leads to another. Before you know it, you know, we're transforming. We're touching lives and transforming lives all over the world. Right. So, you know, it's, you know, as, as we close this session, right, it, that the journey doesn't stop here. It's an ongoing adventure, guys. You know, whether you're exploring the, the 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 website or or diving into the books or hitting those buttons, you're an integral part of what we're doing here. Amen. So until tomorrow, keep the faith, right? You know, groove with God's timing, right? And 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 let's let's and let the wisdom that we discovered today be a guiding light in your journey. Amen. You know, you, you may not agree with me on some of the stuff that I said, and that's okay. You don't have to, right? But it's biblical, right? So, Heavenly Father, as we conclude this, let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we uh, uh, conclude this journey together here in, in Titus chapter 1, Lord, let's, we, we pause and thank you for the wisdom, insight, and challenges that, in, that, that we encounter along the way. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And we're grateful for the guidance that it provides. Lord, we, we lift up our leaders, Lord, those in formal position and those leading quietly in the background. You know, may they be strengthened by your spirit, walking in, in humility and reflecting the love of Christ in every decision and action. We also pray for discernment in this community. You know, help us recognize and refute false teachings. You know, standing firm on, on the solid ground of Scripture and your truth in Scripture, Lord. And may our hearts be open for correction and, 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 and our lives be a testimony, you know, to the power of your word. Lord, as we go from this, this space to our daily lives, may the lessons from Titus echo in our hearts to empower us to be leaders, not just in within the church, but, but you know, church walls, but in our families, our workplaces, in our communities. Lord, we pray this in your son, Jesus name. Amen. 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 And you know, that if, if and I'm going to say this, man, if, if you, if you own a business, 
right? And and you're you're and and you're the one that's supposedly leading. I suggest you start leading. You know what I mean? Um, because if 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 you're being lax a daisy and stuff like that, man, no one's gonna follow you. You know, and uh, uh, this is where stepping up, being have integrity, having the righteousness, having the righteous lifestyle, living in obedience to Christ always comes in. You know, it, 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 it's not about perfection. It's about striving to be like Christ in our workplaces, in our homes, and as well in our churches. Because I'm going to tell you right now, guys, right? The church has a major problem in the leadership. You know, and uh, that must be corrected. You know, so gave you a little bit of insight about me and I, and I, and I hope you guys take it right. And God bless you. And, uh, um, you know, you guys are a part of this community. If you're listening and stuff like that, we love you and we pray for you daily. God bless you guys. You guys have a great day.